once, we the moderator today we're going to change the format. As per my request, because uh, we'll try something new. In any case, let me repeat to you five. Uh, actually, got another one, so there are five ideas to be discussed by our distinguished panelists. First one, publication culture in computer engineering. <coughs> Second, concurrency control for synchronous in multi-core, multi synchronization in multi-core. Not even I can say my hand right. Synchronization. Synchronization, yeah. You can't read your hand. So, what to do about memory regarding power and error? Scale And uh, last question yesterday was, is it the end of the general purpose model of computation? And today we have what's missing for the brain to simulate, for the NASIC to simulate the brain. So, I'll let you guys run wild. Yes. If ever something very bad happens, I'll come back. Every time you speak, it's something bad. So of course, so yes. That's how we press through it. Go ahead. What do you want to start with? Should we try with the last one then? What is missing? Lazy to simulate the brain. To simulate the brain. Brain is missing. You have to understand first how you don't know what you want to simulate. It's a very difficult to make, you know? Right. So it's funny, you know? it's always very, been a very intriguing talk of what I will read from the neuroscience research, the basic processes of the brain, like the brain processes, based on some brain events. And anyway, we succeed to think that whatever comes out of this makes any sense, right? And the question is here, how come? And before we do not understand that, we do not do anything. How do you even know it's random? That's what they say. Those who know, or those who like to push it. No, 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 those who really work in medical science. Medical science. Yes, they measure the frequency. No, no. no science with the DM causes of science. Physics, chemistry, medical science, computer science, social science. If it's really a science, it doesn't have to do with science at all. <laughs> So I would say that uh, we don't have a clue. And so some of the silliness which has been going on forever, so ah, look at a neuron. We can approximate a neuron by a threshold logic unit. You know, you've got the various inputs, you've got weights, uh, you sum up the uh, input times weight, you know, the inner product of the input vector times the weight vector. If it's above the threshold, bingo, it fires. You say, wee, we've got a brain. We don't have a brain, we have a logic circuit of threshold logic unit. And uh, no, I would say that what's missing is an enormous amount of insight and knowledge about what the hell is really going on. I don't know who made this question, so I hope it's satisfied. It's more fundamental. It's more coming up, you know, in fact, there's an escapade for this year on the uh, bottom. Yeah. Nice. 
I, I, I mean, it's been a, like you yeah, said, it's been a, a long history of attempting to study color pits and neurons and different methods and learning machines and so on. But the, there's never been any real insight as far as that. There's, there's always been the idea that if I could really put these things together in some random fashion, they, something will come out of the other end. And there's a yeah. I think it's random, so maybe it's a good thing. Meters are clear evolution. No, I'm talking about the processes that they used to simulate. Ah, yes. And it's true, if you put something in, something will come out of the other end. In fact, you eat food every day. So, I want to make a provocative question, a provocative statement. Okay? So, computer architecture has always been driven by applications. By the uh, benchmark applications. The benchmark set people study and say, oh, in order to run this benchmark set faster, you have to have this and this part of the instruction set change. So my claim is that in the future we don't have a job. We are not going to study computer detection anymore. And here's the reason. If you go if you go cloud computing, all we need is a browser. And let's say some image compression and decompression techniques and video and audio compression techniques here at the handheld. All the rest will be done by parallel machines, ridiculously parallel, you know, because each one of us is going to be a different thread with different needs. So pretty much it's going to be a commodity infrastructure. We don't have to study this anymore. I'm not sure what you think. Really? That's good. Because somebody could have built the cloud, right? That's already there, it's working as far as I know. Well, it's getting, there's a lot more work to put in. Which kind of work do you imagine? Well, the, all these special applications and so on that he's going to create. But they're already there, so that's, that's not much. Yeah, well, I can't give any diagnosis for the cloud, but I suspect things like that. Sure. The cloud? Somehow the cloud is the answer. No, and I'm saying that's yes. clearly that uh, we'll have less and less things to study. He's just saying that that's going to put everybody out of work. So what's, I think it's going to so what's the difference between the cloud and time sharing of about 40 years ago? Yes. Does that put everybody out of work? Yeah. But that, that's what I'm talking about. It did? No. What was the question? What, so the first question is, is there something fundamentally different between the cloud of today, other than the sexy term cloud, and time sharing of 40 years ago. Yes, there is. Price of computers. At that sorry? time, nobody had computers. I'm Today, sorry? everybody has several of them. Oh, that's Price yes. of the computers. Something of the computers. Price. 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 Money. Or oh, the price of the computers. Price of the computers. And so nowadays, everybody has computers. Everybody has access to the cloud. And that we didn't have before. Sure. Right. But now, people want to solve bigger and bigger problems. In the cloud, right? End users? You see, end users looking for bio stuff, gene recognition, or something like this. So I thought the reason why end users go to the cloud because it's cheaper to go to the cloud. That's not the case. It is. But Forty what years I'm ago, is, if you wanted to get your work done, it was cheaper to be in a time sharing. But you're saying the same thing. So since you have the cloud, you don't have to worry about computer detection. And 40 years ago, since you had time sharing, you didn't have to worry about computer architecture. Therefore, as of 40 years ago, there was no need to study computer architecture. Oh, you knew it, because you didn't have the personal computer. Now you have it. Even if this thing is working through the cloud, it's still going to have, essentially, it's a low cost supercomputer to do the browser. But do we need a low cost supercomputer here or there? Well, you need one in here to do the wires. The wireless, the wireless bandwidth is going to go up because you want to deliver all the stuff down this pipe, right? Yeah. And and it's going to and it's going to be more and more sophisticated. And, and, blah, blah, blah. and that computer is going to become it probably is a significant part of this. It certainly is a good fun, although it's a really basic thing. But it it's um, it's a significant. You can look at what and this is something we spend some time on. You look at the calculations that have to be done for something, just like a 3G, it's amazing what you have to do in half a watt. 
Yeah, yeah. you're saying the same thing. I was going to look up. No, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not. But, but that's not going to stop us having to design computers. They're just going to be single exactly. processing. Exactly, but not there you go. So well, for this thing, oh. but the, ones, the ones that are at the cloud are going to be general purpose cores. So can you give us a glimpse of what you expect from of FPGA? Of whatever is here and whatever is in the cloud then. What kind of search directions we have in these two sides? You want us to set your research plan? Have a more fundamental, have a more fundamental uh, position with this. We had this story before. It was a great. It was something else before. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not the oldest here, but uh, I'm old enough to go through all the phases from uh, you know, when the PC was invented and was around and see the machines. We hear all these things, but we, you know, sort of they go through a phase and people adopt what's convenient for them. All of this. I mean, this cloud thing, I think in a few years they have to rename it again because it's nothing but the people that are doing greed. They couldn't justify it anymore because of the tremendous overhead they had. So they said now cloud uh, companies uh, universities don't like that they don't go out, especially now with all these uh, things with hackers. So I don't think, especially our community, which is dealing with computer architecture, they should worry much about what they are doing because uh, it's another phase and we will go. But uh, the important thing that uh, Yale and something which I get really upset in general is that we recycle all the concepts, and especially companies do that. Like uh, Microsoft came up with uh, what they call it components. I mean, who used to use IMSL? How many of you remember IMSL, the, the library? I mean, the, when I was a student, then it was other libraries. I mean, components is just like the libraries we were using since the beginning. So it's just uh, some people rediscovered. And by reading, and I'm, I'm taking this, by reading a lot of uh, even computer magazine about uh, currency. I realized that a lot of the writers do not have a clue of all the parallel processing research and implementation that took place in the 80s and 90s. So or 70s and 60s. Yes, 70s and 60s. I mean, it's, it was a, 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 it was a editors of the Ethical magazine, right? It takes that uh, started from scratch and you know, just throwing ideas. It's a job. I mean, that's part of the problem. I think sort of related to the models of the time. Yeah, that's Basically, if you want to publish in computers, all you do is look at papers that are older than five years and just reproduce them. And no way they know anything. <laughs> I mean, this is like this moving window of ignorance that's about five years. I think it's five years. But however, Luigi's question was a little bit more difficult. Different, so different in some aspect. Uh, he was like uh, saying what we should expect for computer applications in the future. So this cloud thing, yeah, I agree, is going to be you know, doing some part of the computation, and of course you need the terminals. As I don't think it's going to put you out. Of I don't think it's, it's not going to put you out. Of I think no, it's going to On the contrary. Yes, there will. On the contrary. Not only is it not going to put you out of business. By the way, the word you speak Portuguese. The word, yes, the true. word cloud is very bobo. <laughs> bobo. You speak Portuguese. Not only is it not going to put you out of work, but it's going to increase what you have to do. Because now that we've got the cloud, there are new problems. So let's take this one simple problem which hasn't been solved yet that we as architects haven't looked at. Security. Yeah. And security becomes much, much more with the cloud. Trevor mentioned, uh, you know, the, uh, the bandwidth problem with all this stuff that you're going to do. In fact, maybe we'll start uh, uh, actually studying electromagnetics as a uh, foundation course for uh, dealing with wireless. You know, pointing vector really does have something to do with your ability to communicate with the cell phone. So what I'm trying to say, so it's going to be not just uh, communication, it's going to be security, it's going to be managing some of these resources, it's going to be figuring out what the architecture of these structures ought to be. It's going to make your, so if there is a uh, full employment act for computer architects, uh, the cloud actually helps that. There's no end to what is going to be. We have, 
gotten to the tip of the iceberg when it comes to uh, uh, exploiting computing capability in this world. Well, I agree. Because in addition to the cloud, there will be many, many more new applications. Right? You see them embedded, and actually, especially in the embedded domain, so I think this album is pretty much aware of that, and they are not afraid that they will lose the job because of the cloud. You would like to have Notice many. The cloud. The cloud is okay. Many new applications, diverse things. But Trevor just said that at the handheld, you will have a big DSP thing because you need signal processing, you need video compression, you need security. So, do we need uh, a real computer or just a base bench of ASICs as it is today? Security is very different from communication. But it's also, too vivid, right? Yeah. It's Incredibly, and in fact, it is a problem that architecture people have not really uh, stepped up to the plate on. Okay. I think there's lots of things. By the way, I don't think it's uh, applications that drive computer architecture at all. I think it's money. That comes from the No, no, I think, yeah, no, no. I think money comes first, applications come second. How do I make money now? Can I find an application for which I can make money? And can I come up with something that somebody is willing to buy? So I think that's the driving force around it. So I think the panel is super easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting that. I hope someone in the audience can help me. I agree with you. What is this? <laughs> that's, that's the story of my life. <laughs> I don't really care about it. It's two of us. Huh? It makes two of us. I mean, there are issues of latency that make it difficult sometimes. Might make it difficult to put things for a So you want to so play high quality video on you or high quality graphics. Graph okay. Like this. You, might. Let's I mean, you can actually get pretty good graphics off of the network these days. You, know, you, you can get a service that. But you need a. But you also need buffering, lots of buffering, which also brings us to Scam's comments. What to do about all this memory and what you need? Actually, I put that down because we can basically, uh, you know, talk about power. I don't need the power. I don't really understand the power. But from what I read is we can reduce the power of uh, the circuits, make them simple, etc. But still, we need a huge amount of cash. And that's because we're still using the same model we're using before. Things like the same, you know, we we'll have some in it, and then we go back to the future. Small scratch, but it's more efficient. Etc. But, uh, you know, no matter how you know, get to these new chips that are power efficient, the memory is there. On the chip, it takes a lot of space, a lot of power. Is that bad? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's something which you haven't been able to reduce. To the okay. They like to deal with that and the second. And I actually, it happens if you know the, or the size or oh, the certainly oh. reduce the size of memory. I mean, the memory I'm, cell today is a lot smaller than memory cell. Oh, no, no, I don't know. If you look at some of the new memory technologies, they're actually very old. What's a percentage? What's a percentage? What's a percentage of the floor plan that goes to memory? And what's a percentage of the that's that's my point. I'm not talking about. You know, of course, I have. What's a percentage of what? Of uh, the floor plan of the. Oh, the floor plan. Oh, the so that's a very different question. And that's, oh, a, that's, a, that's what I mean. It sort of dominates the memory. Dominates now the. But that's the, the reason for that is it's easier to double the size of the cache. You want to double the size of the cache, you just go boom, and you're done. You want to design a better branch predictor, and somebody knows what the hell he's doing. Half a dozen search designers support that. No, 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 but I want to come back and support Luigi a little bit. I'm sorry, Luigi. I'm now going to mix up with, uh, you know, your motivation. No, no, support Luigi. No, no, Absolutely. support Luigi. Absolutely. Because, basically, we had this, uh, we did experience this problem. Here in Europe, you know, 
Europe and uh, the mission. The problem of the kind he was mentioning. That architects are going to be out of work. Yeah, that actually all the architectural work is done in the United States. So they were saying, oh, we build it. That's just simply because Americans are smart. And then the Yale part is there, you know. And they said, in Europe, we do not do research in computer architecture, so there is no money for you guys for research. So exactly how we can prevent that due to this kind of hype terms and type trends in the market, we, you know, get into the corner that not, I don't know, the electrical engineers at some point. So many years ago, in the times of Tesla, right? Yeah, the electrical engineer was very, you know, very prestigious. And then, you know, the electrical supply is available in any wall, you go plug it in, and all the infrastructure which is behind and all the work that is done to make this thing work is completely not appreciated. And the, the question is that in the computing is also getting in that direction, getting more an utility that we are just used to get. And the cloud is one of the examples. How we can basically explain that to you know, the outside world, because we know how important it is what we are doing, but you know, what we are doing is important, is still going to be important, is maybe even going to be more important in the future as uh, Yale correctly identified, when you have the databases of different comp uh, competing components in the same cloud, they should be pretty much uh, yeah, secured for each other. That's, the tip of the, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So yeah. your, your complaint is actually that you can't get funding for your research because from the EU they say, I'm okay, it's not important. We changed that. We changed that. But so, so the answer to that one is easy, actually. No, I have a tail. Let him go to the EU. He'll get money for it. Well, that's what we did. <laughs> it's what the rest of us did. Oh, he only gets money for personal. That's not true. No, no. He, he, he gets money for all of you guys. To be honest, uh, in the last call, he was not very pleased with those ones. I don't think, for instance, that we take roads for granted, but that doesn't put civil engineers out of work. We take what for granted? Roads. Bridges, things, or oh, roads. Bridges, there's still plenty of them around. I think there's a ton of things to do. I mean, the, 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 if you look at what's happening in the in the sort of connected space, you know, going to this Internet of Things idea, where you've got processes in just about everything that moves and doesn't, and so there's a. I think just a lot of opportunity for designing these systems and figuring out data structures and how you manage all of that. And, yeah. and it's immense, actually. And maybe the reason people don't think it is is because they can't think. It's thinking, well, well, they're depressed or something like that. But, it, you know, I see these people that are trying to put computers and in, in, talking about civil engineers, in bridges so that they can figure out when they're going to collapse or in structures for um, all this you know automatic um, management of resources and delivery of goods to stores and people I think actually we're in danger of putting a lot of people out of work not but not computing I think so but, I mean I think if you look at structural unemployment in the quote developed world it's very high, not, not just because of current financial crisis. And you, 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 it's because of this technology, you're seeing a, a basically a bimodal distribution in society in which you have people that cannot really partake in this phenomenon because their kind of education is inappropriate and, and there's nothing they can do except wait tables. So you have an increasing number of students that Well, that's certainly true in the United States. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so part of the problem is that. Down, go, go to school. So I'll respond. I'll, I'll respond to that. So part of the problem, I think, is that uh, the structural thing isn't sexy. So in my country, which, uh, which uh, so no, no, no. So okay, so I'll develop it. So in my country, for example, uh, nobody works on roads and bridges. And so right now in the U.S. we have a real serious problem about bridges collapsing. And we don't know tomorrow whether any of these bridges will be standing. Well, and in fact, there's been some serious disasters in the U.S. And you say, how come? 
Well, it's because we're not, I, because it's not sexy to be a oh, you know a civil engineer. No, we, I think it's it's become it's because the various governments are just not allocating funds for the, that's because it's, it's that's right out. because it's sexier to allocate funds for. Uh, the club. Well, actually, we have some very good roads in Afghanistan. So we have an exascale uh, program in the U.S. where we're, you know, putting. Well, Alex say yesterday, it's 682 of these. But that's a lot. Right. So no, these that, 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 our government is funding 682 times in racks, right? But these things. But the are bridges are falling down. The, and Alex, I think, and if he's still here, is Alex here? He's, he's tied in behind me. Ah, Alex is here. here. The <laughs> point is, the cost of those things is small compared to the cost of even a modest bridge, for instance. And we're not doing the bridge, so... And so what do you want to do? Throw that away and build one crummy bridge? No, no what I'd like to do is feel safe driving. You know the bridge across the Mississippi out of Minneapolis? That was ridiculous. Shouldn't have happened, right? And it's happening all over the U.S. Not only the Europe has. That's a problem. funding allocation. It's got nothing to do with the technology. So, it's a funding allocation based. So, Georgi brought up the point that it's tough to sell the EU on computer architecture research. I'm making the point that there are certain areas that are sexy and certain ones that are not. And one of the reasons why we're seeing the problem, at least in my country is that it's easier to put all kinds of money into exascale than take care of the infrastructure of those bridges. You know, you made a very good, one of your points, which is outstanding, which a lot of people are not aware of, is that these construction people, when they build bridges these days, is they do put computers in there so that you can, Trevor's absolutely right, so you can tell when the load is such so that the bridge doesn't collapse. But, what about these styles of bridges that are ready to collapse? And there's, we're not training people to, you know, I'm, I'm, how many kids go into civil engineering these days wanting to, you know? That's a popular, it's a popular, it's a popular. Quite a few of them. It's just, it's the smallest. It's the exascale? It's the smallest engineering department in our college. It's the largest in ours. Wow. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, so, back to your original question, <laughs> so I'll give you the, the short answer is yeah, a triangle is a very stable structure. So you build them out of triangles. Okay. Uh, but I, I, have, I have a more fundamental problem to solve. A fundamental problem? Yes. Because we, we haven't started yet developing any parallel computers, parallel computers or parallel computers. We are still putting it for later, later. We still use the same serial. Now, with the multi. Yes, the, the same serial computer with the building single block. It doesn't change much. Why do you want it to change? Because we need to exploit concurrency. Why do we need to exploit it? Okay. Otherwise, why do we put so many cores on the chip? I don't know. I'm not doing that. This is all what we have to do with that area. Yeah, I mean, that was that's that, exactly right. That's what I said yesterday. It's much easier to go boom, 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 boom. It was an engineering solution. So eventually, and this is something which we in parallel process can be Seems that you can't, you can't so the, there's, a, there's a space of algorithms out there, right? I mean, logical. It's algorithms. You can enumerate. Remember that class? <laughs> if you enumerate the space of algorithms? Yeah, so you enumerate the Not count? It's count. So, and so there, so how many of them, how many of those algorithms, what percentage or what density in that space of power. Three. That's, that's probably about right. No, I'm serious. Nobody's actually answered that question. That's sort of a fundamental yeah, question, it seems to me. Yeah, you answered it definitively, I think. So. Yeah. Seriously, thing. nobody has ever came as ever sort of examined. They've been, you've got, you're rushing off. You've got this sort of vague idea that parallelism is good. And uh, you don't actually know what to expect in this space of algorithms, which has been, you know, we know we can characterize algorithms very well. We don't do this in the last nearly 80 years. Um, what's, you know, we've got lots of instances, FFT for instance, 
uh, matrix multiplied by maybe, you know, that's two. And what back. was the other one you had? It was a big pack. A big pack. No, seriously, I'm trying to be a bit more serious. I mean, the, the, this idea of parallelism is, um, it may be that there's only a very small subset of algorithms that you can actually parallelize. So why is parallelism? Is why it's so difficult. Why is parallelism not good? Why is it necessary? To get things done faster. Okay. But well, my point is that, yes, we do research and we don't care because we don't keep doing our own research. But the industry, switch, I, I don't think they switch to market course. So they're discussing about concurrency. There is new discussion. That's why I, I read many, many articles which were written by people that didn't know anything about what happened in the last 40 years, 50 years since 67, the year ago. And, uh, yeah, but you, 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 ever watch somebody, you ever watch somebody drive a car? And they're eating a sandwich with one hand, and they're on the cell phone with the other hand. They're doing three things in parallel. And apparently not doing any of them very well, because but they're more like they went, they had to stop the car to eat the sandwich, and stop the car to talk. I wish they would actually. I wish they would also, but somehow the mentality is to get the job done faster. But to go back to in a many application specific areas, there's a lot of parallelism that's widely exploited all the time. A lot of signal processing is naturally parallel, and there are machines out there that do this stuff. There's one in your pocket if you've got a cell phone. I don't know. The, the, not you, it, it, well, that makes Then that may just tell you that the space of parallel things is somewhat limited. Trevor, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, he made a point that industry is going that way. So you are, I, I totally agree with you that people do not program in parallel, they do not think in parallel, and there are not so many algorithms that you can easily parallelize. But apparently the industry is doing that way. How come is that? Who said the algorithm in the index? I wanted to ask a terrible looking answer because algorithms came from computer scientists in the last 60 years. They were came in a single channel, and they were talking the algorithms. The natural algorithms like Google, I don't know this word. I mean, the algorithms. Oh, algorithms. Um, they have been influenced from the sequential method. Well, and, some of them and some of them, like uh, today we are hearing about tiling. The tiling is because of the touch. It's not because it's a better algorithm or worse algorithm. It's just, we, if we go to the natural things, most of them are in parallel, I think. At least that's what we were told in the I mean, a lot of that's a case of definitely. Think of something like MATLAB. You, you write an expression to add two vectors together. Is that a parallel state? Because? So, so no, what you're saying is that somebody would say, no, that's, that you're just adding two items together. There's nothing parallel there. What you're saying is we know that they're actually composed of identical components. That all gets done in... I, so back in the day, a parallel computer was something that did worldwide arithmetic because people then thought the element of interest was the bit. You're just saying it's a component. So a lot of this is actually a matter of how you define the data type. So the other thing about parallel is where is this magic? What is it that's going to solve? What you know? What is this new paradigm I've been waiting for? So when you design, time. when you design your circuits, uh, you design an atom. Uh, ripple the carry or you use look ahead carry generation? Actually, I hit the micro. <laughs> <laughs> so, look ahead carry generation, as you well know, is an example of parallelism at this very low, low fundamental level. Actually, a chip is not doing a zillion things in parallel, that's why we use all the transistors because the basic AMU hasn't changed much. All we do is just we do credit, we do, we do uh, decoding of all the possible instructions on the computer in parallel at different times. So we, we use we use parallelism in many things in the computer. We just don't use them at the concurrency. You're just the you're looking at a level of abstraction and saying that that particular level is not parallelism. And you're looking you say maybe problem. this is your you know imperative programming language or whatever it is. And you want some paradigm that, that says I want to be able to write things that have got more 
inherent from the RFC without thinking explicitly about it. Is that it? Yeah. I, I think that it will continue. And there is a chance that it might not continue because the new developers with the ministers, maybe they will solve the problem of the memory latency. And uh, when I go back to doing serial computers, then. Uh, well, I think at some level, everything so, things become serial because you think of one thing after another. There's got, it, it seems to me that there's an inherent sequentiality in a lot of the Yeah, And maybe the, the elements that you're working with exhibit a, a lower level of abstraction, a lot of power. It's, exactly. it's just so, more or more. So I think, so think Amdahl plays here, uh, even decision making. So, yes. At the end, you have to say go or no go. But before you get to that sequential part, you've got to gather a lot of information. There's no reason why most of that stuff can't be done. Well, I'm not saying, I'm saying there, you can't do things in parallel. There's plenty of examples, that's the point I was making. Many of them are in application specific. Yes, sir. And we heard Alex yesterday as how all those program for even those large programs like weather forecasting we know it's it's parallel. And it may be difficult. And do I want to because it's some it's things are difficult. Do I want so I want to write a program to tell me tomorrow's weather. Do I want that program to take three days to run? It'd be quicker just look out the window tomorrow morning than wait three days sure. to get tomorrow's this weather. Is always so I, a problem. I would like to have instead of taking this long I'd like it to take this long. <coughs> I'd like Part of this will be sequential. I agree with that. that. At some level, you now have to decide or whatever. But if I back up from that, it seems like... So, I, all I'm saying is I think a lot of that is subsumed by just viewing the thing as, a, as, a different, as different layers of abstraction in some layers. It's like I so said... The, I don't have a problem. Good. So I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that. That's right. no. So I, don't, I think this parallelism thing, there, there is no problem. It just is. So this this abstraction yeah, level. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ah, good. Uh, I think this. Uh, I have two observations. First of all, I think in the 1940s, I think it was something like that. Somebody said, the old world only needs one computer. I think actually five. Yeah, yeah, five. That's okay. Five. No, the right number was five. And that guy was only awfully wrong. Another uh, example that I want to throw into the picture is go to nature. It's a simple file. How many things are going on in a file in parallel? Just only looking at the skies, you can do interesting things when we put that problem in parallel time. So thank you, Herod. That's exactly the point that I was uh, up to make to Trevor. And again, it's back to the first question about the brain. You think on that special level that you uh, think about one and then two and then three. All these neurons that make you think that they do the work in parallel. So we, so we do not listen. know how this thing works, but we know some things that the brain does not do. Okay. You're confusing do two issues. One is how the brain works, yeah. if, it, if it does. And then a lot of people, by the way, go back yeah. to the earlier things, are not, it's totally unclear that the brain is even a Turing machine. So modeling no, with not. a computer is probably, may not be the right thing to do. That question hasn't been answered before we even start building neural networks. Correct. Right. There are a lot of fairly smart people out there who don't necessarily agree it's a Turing machine. And oh, so there are a lot of pseudo smart people yeah. out there. Well, they don't know. And, 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 and they, no, go back to all that is that the they, and they refuse to admit that they don't know yeah. because it's easier. Well, you can't know. answer the question yet. Nobody's answered it. I mean, you know, if you if you ever if you ever looked at you know undecidability issues that some of some of the early papers by uh, Gurdle, his ideas, he, he actually believed that his incompleteness proof demonstrated that the human brain is not a computer. So that's an interesting point. That's quite a while ago. Now you may disagree with that. Let's go to the fly thing and forget that it's, you know, a neural network, because that's a separate question. But let's just say that it, it, um, it there are a lot of things going on in parallel, but that's just a level of abstraction. As far as the fly is concerned, his brain said, or maybe her brain, I am going to fly. That 
and you know, so at one level, this is a very sequential idea. Lots of little things happen as a result of that. It's just like when you add a vector together, you can go down the layers. You know, you can you in your MATLAB thing, if, whatever it is, you just put two symbols with uh, you know an add sign between them, and you may be adding two matrices together, right? So that breaks down into a bunch of two you know, square things with all that elements being added, which in turn breaks down to all those bits being added, like with Yale's carry look ahead adder, which in turn is a million little transistors firing, which in turn is billions of layers. Yes, so there's parallelism. So what? So if you can organize it properly... It is. I, I'm not sure what the question is. It's not like this is, you know, we have a structure for doing this thing, for capturing all those things. We design circuits, we, we design a process to create the elements of the circuits, we design the circuits, we put them together in logic. All these things fire concurrently. Fine. I mean, so the algorithm layer, you think it's, uh, so let me ask No, I don't. I think that all I said is at the algorithm level, yeah. Which could be anywhere actually, because the algorithm could describe something at any layer in that abstract. Sure. Right? Just think of, just, we don't know what's the likelihood of algorithms being parallels. It may be there's a theorem that says there's essentially no parallels. Yes, but we, we have a lot of applications for supercomputing, which takes years to Yes, there is no support. Okay. So once the, the stuff you are talking about, then actually me, I just sort of played the first time. Uh, you want to uh, the first time where uh, you know I was reading about the uh, I I don't remember which page said that it was eighty, eight days. Eight. Eight. eight yes. Eight. eight. latches. No, I mean the great the great design. I mean in yes. the in the great one, it was eight gates per latch. So, uh, you know, that Twelve and a half in a second clock time. Yes, that Sorry. tells us how much things go in parallel. If all you can have is a gates. So the, the chip is, uh, in the chip is everything, lots of things are going in parallel. But that's not enough. I'm talking about the next level. So we don't have to worry about the supercomputing application. Maybe it's limited, but there is any. So that's what I mean. We, we still taking control flow computers and put them together with some app. So Alex, you have to raise the level of abstraction and say to the supercomputer, give me results. This is one task. Well, some guy does actually do that. Some guy did that. Yeah, he walks into the lab and he says to Alex, get, you know, I want the answer to this. <laughs> because you know the answer, right? It's 42. Yeah, it's always 42, right? Exactly. It's never 42. <laughs> but it's 39. I, I, I'm, I'm still confused about this. Oh, we, it seems to me what you are asking for is better abstractions to write um, programs. And, and you have presupposed, and you may be right, but you've offered no proof that a sequential or a, a binomial machine or whatever you want to call it uh, is not the answer. And my question is, okay, if it's not proven. So if it's not the so wait a minute. And not this the argument's been going on. This, what was the question? This is, this is like a sequential. What was the question? Been going on for Prove the no, no, no. So you say well, it's not the answer. What's the question? I thought the question was to get the how, how do you get the thing done faster? That's a, that's a separate question, but no, how, no, no. So you said it's, it's not the answer. You said the von Neumann sequential model is not the answer. So the answer to what? No, no, no. To the concurrency problem we have right now with the okay. With the multi that's a clear state. So my next, but and it's reasonable, and you've actually you this, wow. this is a large community of people who want to throw this model over. Perhaps with good reason. But I've not seen a concrete argument that proves that it's a bad idea. Oh, why, why throw it over the board? Like Andrea tells you that I'm doing 
those loans forever. So there will be algorithms, there will be tasks that will remain sequential, and then the phenomenal problem is the best model for them. Right? And you also mentioned earlier that in the digital signal processing there's plenty of algorithms that are there actually in the mobile phones that are parallel and or in scientific yeah, or find, in, think of something like finite element analysis. Right. Yes. That's so that you will naturally yeah, naturally parallelize it. And yes, so I think if you look at different domains, but they sort of count, we're countable and small. So what about the rest of the space of our world? Ah, ah, so that's where you go. So that may be right. Yeah, we don't. So no, I, 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 finally, I finally got a hook on to what you're trying to do. Exactly. It, which is that, uh, isn't it the case that most tasks that you need to do are sequential in nature? And that it's the... Well, maybe you don't need to do them, but just enumerating the possibilities of well-formed algorithms. Does anybody ever answer that question? I don't think they have. And, and it may not be that damning. It's, we know, for instance, that we cannot build universal debuggers. There's a proof that says that, right? Well, we know that we can't look at a program in general and answer questions about it, such as, does it stop? Which is essentially a debug, right? We know that. That's, that's been around for a long time. There's a proof. There is a yes. proof. So, all I'm saying is, let's look at all these algorithms. And is it. But, but that doesn't stop us building debuggers. And that won't stop. Even if there's the space of algorithms is mostly sequential, that doesn't mean we're not going to build parallel. We do build parallel stuff all the time. But it's very well defined. It, it, at the moment, maybe that's just because we don't understand that space. But the idea that, you know, what's the answer to, to for solving these things? I don't know that. And I have not seen a convincing argument. I see the level of abstraction going up in programming languages. Um, you know, I don't want to hit MATLAB again because it's sort of a crazy thing, but it does, in its own small space, have some no notion of implicit parallelism. Because of, because of the data types that, that it uses, for instance. You know, if you were going to write all that stuff in assembly code, you would probably see a lot more um, you know, fork and join structures that are completely gone from, from that, that level of abstraction. So my, my point to guys that, that, that say what we're doing is wrong, how can we improve this? Yes, I think we can improve it, but in what direction do we go to improve it? Do we throw the binomial model of the text with some Turing machines? Um, throw that out of the window? No, they're complementary. Thanks. Well, I feel the debates become rather sort of philosophical. Um, so, do we really need to know if the yet to be, yet to be developed algorithms are sequential or parallel? Uh, isn't it sort of one of the kind of problem that we have a handful of parallel algorithms and we know in, in, in theory it's all nice, but in practice it's bloody hard to get them actually run faster. So, yeah. should we sort of restrict ourselves to the engineering problem and let the, the parallel algorithms do well, the that's complexity the case, but Yeah, you might. Yes, and so we build things that make it easier to write these kind of programs. So, what is the computation model underpinning this? So that you've got a general approach to solve this problem, other than blocks or something like this. Exactly, that's, the, that's a very yeah. exciting question. Yeah? And, and, and the point is, but I hear the same statement, we need to throw it away, you know, we need to do this, we need to do this. What is this? That's all I'm asking. What is this? You say it's hard. Some things are hard. Maybe they're inherently hard, actually. Complexity <laughs> theory tells us some things are inherently hard. Some things are unprovable, right? So maybe they're just damn hard and you're complaining about it. Yeah. Well, but if they weren't, you wouldn't have a job. If some guy out on the street who, you know, who's basically waiting tables could do that, then you'd be waiting tables along with it. Sure, but let's come back to that. So basically, only if the problem is hard, it doesn't really say that we can't make it any easier. So, well, 
complexity of people think in sort of big O notation, but we are the ones who are looking at the actual constant factor. Sure. So let's make the constant factor sort of a little bit sl uh, smaller. Yeah. You know, one thing that we can forget here is that uh, I equals I plus one doesn't make sense for you. <laughs> Something which is, you know, and it was just a convention we used when we started. They, when they started, it was always around in those days. And it's they kept on using it. But mathematically, it doesn't make sense. Like those marks. I equals I. That's why. Right. So you've changed the definition of equal, is all you've done. Yeah. No, no, so it does make sense, and the reason is because you, when you, you just, say equal, you don't mean the same you thing that the, the method, that's used that the mathematician means when he says equal. Yeah. But yeah. he's not saying A mathematician, when he says equal, he means something. Yes, when a programmer says equal, he means something. The two somethings are very, very different. Yes, I know. And that's why they make sense you know, in the two separate A lot domains. of programming languages early on were aware of that. They did not use the equal sign because they didn't want to compute, overload the meaning. And two parallel lines were about an eighth of an inch long. So it's, got no, it's not equals, that's why it's In not. In fact, you have the construct dot uh, colon equal. So, so, if Trevor, so Trevor, your problem is that uh, people who, so people say, uh, you know, von Neumann is, uh, it's time to, to uh, forget about von Neumann. And by the way, you're absolutely right. Uh, we, we should not be giving credit to von Neumann, we should be giving credit to Turing. Or who knows somebody before the Well, it was a, but a demonstration of a universal machine, which means you can you can modify it. That, that's that, that's correct, and that right? and that happened long. Ago. That, that, so that was not possible. And then you can build a general code. Yeah. And, and if Morris Wilkes was in the audience, he'd be happy to say that von Neumann did not come up with this. But I'm not, that's but, not, but no, but, but, the, but the point, but no, I, I need to do the point. The point is that you you're bothered by people who uh, say that the days of the von Neumann model are over. We need a new paradigm. I'm bothered by the people that say ILP is dead. But I think both of us are bothered by people who don't think, but just parrot what somebody who also didn't think told them was true. And so you end up with the community of people continually parroting and I think, ah, there's a, there's a parallel algorithm. The number of people who parrot nonsense grows exponentially. Is that Yale's law? <laughs> it's Yale's law number 783. No, no, I'm being serious now. That you get this person who doesn't think but says, ILP is dead. Or the days of the von Neumann model are over. And he says it with authority. And so there are two people in the audience who believe it, and they say it with authority. And then it becomes four people, and the thing grows exponentially. And then we end up with what is bothering. I'm not bothering about it. I just want to know what this thing is that's going to solve this. It sort of strikes me, it's a bit, it's Brahminism. Okay, you have 
So now let's just go to the next level, like we did with everything else, because if we look at the history of the computing, it's sort of parallelism that is saying it every time. But I think so it's happening, isn't it? As we, yeah. as we sit, I mean, no, we, it's not new pro a lot of the newer programming languages that have sort of natural, implicit parallelism. These application domain yes, languages, like implementation, implementation in hardware is still. Not there. Database languages and things like that. They're yes, inherently uh, parallel, I think, under the hood. Yes, but uh, my point is that we are now, again, within parallel They were being driven in the 80s and 90s and they were going out of business because they couldn't compete with the single chip. Okay, but so they realized that you know, it cannot uh, money the rules. So now that the industry goes to multiple forms of chip, we should start seriously thinking about currency and think about new ways of doing it. That's all I'm saying. Because that's the next level. The same way that we have I think we agree to that. Yes, that, that's uh, what I'm saying. You just, and I don't see what I... Um, and I was told that um, in, it seems that uh, in the high peak probably, probably what was that in the high peak there is a forecast, the, the old map and the forecast. I was told that, that um, when they asked the companies, around the table, all of them said that they were going to look at data to make stuff. Did they dissent those Yes. And um, in the context of business getting money. No, I mean, where in the architecture is this going to be? Well, I don't know. That's uh, wasn't there. I was told, uh, but uh, there is a need for concurrency with the multi course and many course over there. And I think that's my explanation I got for why you can change and use the term many cores, because multi cores it uh, implies some sort of uh, uh, synchronization mm -hmm. which they can provide. So they came up with the term many cores, I was told that again. Well, many cores came to that because they're running out of that power budget was over. Was over. I mean, it's, you, know, you can't keep yanking frequency up. Yes, I can. So there's an argument that says it's better to have many slower than one fast. Um, isn't this also connected to the discussion about the plasma pool we had before? Isn't this the, isn't, uh, if everybody uh, is going to have their computing done somewhere in the cloud, then you can have these massive parallel machines which execute all these uh, virtual computers for a lot of different people, which is inherently parallel because there's a lot of people. Yes. Actually, when, when there was no funding in Europe for computer architecture, I was started looking at the basic because basically the cloud is the answer to the basic computer. Uh, basically, because on my phone I cannot do the things I want, so maybe I can just ship it up somewhere else to do. But that's, I think, it's still for a restricted, my personal position. That's the, this is just restricted to stuff that we really don't really care. But, so there's two. I mean, what you're saying is right. That there's sort of an embarrassing parallelism in that you've just got different agents or different clients if you like, doing things, just like going to a bank. They're all accessing a giant database that's all the accounts in the bank, right? But eventually, when they get down that V tree somewhere at the bottom, it's their, their account. And, but on the other hand, there's, there may be inherently parallel things that go on a map reduce operation when you when you ask for some information that it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna sort through all those neighborhoods and look for the you know that when you type in bird or something or red bird or something like that you want to get an answer to it. That's an inherently parallel activity. But you've expressed it very simply. You just type something in fact you don't even have to know a program. Thanks. Unfortunately, you have to, to finish here because you have the closing session in the buses. And I have a personal note to add that, uh, when was it? Sunday. Uh, I was having dinner for a bunch of guys, including Yale. And Yale proposed the open floor idea, open mic idea. And I said, we are going to get no more than three ideas. And I was wrong. I had six ideas. So I'm paying my bet officially here by giving him a bottle <laughs> of... Uh, What's this called? Uh, Vecina. There we go. It's sake. It's sake. Oh, I don't know. I got the wrong one then. Okay. So let's thank our panelists.